obviously, well, I'm going to have the priority here because this is definitely going to work for me this time. Right. I mean, I this is my. Year. Oh, come on, Louis. Don't, I don't, don't have to talk. Not, I don't have to talk. Like, oh, yeah, it is true. Susie is pregnant. I am delighted to announce that we are going to have a baby. It's not fair, man. Why does my engine always blow up and not Nico's? He pushed me, Toto. Toto, Louis pushed me. I'm sorry. I mean, another baby. Hello and welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed. I'm Gareth. He's Richard. Hello. And he's Zog. Hello. Zog, nice to have you back. It's good to be back. Quite a lot has happened since you were last on the programme. The T2 impact, the death of the dinosaurs. and uh, a bit of continental drift been going on, I y- said, yeah. And quite a lot of activity in Formula 1 as well, where Nico is storming away from Lewis. Or yes. rather was until the last race. Yeah, and I've got to say, it really looks to me like Nico, if he wins the championship, which he probably will he really will have earned it I think probably um, will. will Richard Porter probably will mm, yeah probably will I don't know I'm you're not looking terribly bothered one way or the other I mean I, I know I am because I want Hamilton to win because I yeah. just find him a more interesting driver than Rosberg and also I'm going to disagree. I don't think Rosberg has earned it. I think he's... I mean, well, yes, he has. He's, he's driven he's very neatly. Done what he... He's managed the car well. But these are all things that fill me with despair about the state of Formula One, really. You know, did you hear after the American race, they said to... Was it, I can't remember. One of the Mercedes engineers said to Rosberg or maybe to Hamilton. Either way, they went, yeah, very well managed there. You managed the car well. And James Hunt didn't manage the car well. I'm not sure Ayrton Senna managed the car well. They just drove on the ragged edge to the best of their ability. I can understand that there's a skill in in looking after your tyres, but the problem with these tyres we have at the moment and these cars we have at the moment is there's too much management and not enough driving. I don't disagree with that, but the drivers can only do what they can do with the equipment they've been given. Mm. And, you know, Rosberg has just done a magnificent job and he has as a teammate a faster driver who is magnificent. Like you, I'm a huge Hamilton fan. I've got a little bit tired of some of his... Twittish antics this year, but I'm still a big fan. And Rosberg has done everything that he needs to do to beat Hamilton. Mm. Uh, And granted, it took a bit of unreliability on Hamilton's side of the garage to enable that to happen. But even so, Rosberg has done the job. If Rosberg does win, will he be a Formula One world champion or will he be the person who's executed the better starts this year well yeah but you don't usually remember how somebody won a championship do mm. you know you just remember that that's who won the championship that year mm. that's the guy that got the most points i do just feel like he's done very well at the sort of procedural jobs of corralling the best car on the grid around he hasn't had the bad luck that hamilton's had with reliability and i sort of feel like yes all right he's done quite a good job but only in the way that, say, the managing director of Parcel Force does quite a good job. <laughs> oh, come just, on. Oh, no, that's, that's, I can't that, find anything that's, thrilling no, no, about it. No, 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 no. no. Just, I, I, I'm I not think, thrilled. I think that's quite a cruel <laughs> jibe. I mean, I think, you know, you know if... What, Richard, you know, cruel? He, really? you, know, he get, you know, if the guy gets pole position, streaks away at the start of the race and mm. doesn't let anyone get close and manages to stay ahead of a supremely fast teammate. Yes, you can't right. really he's, say he's, he hasn't he's earning his biscuits, but, but I'm not excited by it. We're not excited by the front end. Actually, I take that back. When it came to the US Grand Prix, I had, I think, two days of genuine anxiety for the first time this season about Formula One. I found, like you, Zark, I do care about Lewis. Yes, he drives me mad sometimes, you know. He's such a... <laughs> sometimes but I want him to win why do I want Lewis to win is it because I'm a Brit I don't know I just think he deserves it more than Nico possibly echoing what you say Richard that you know at least Lewis is a bit more exciting as a Mm. driver I can't fault Nico I'm with you on that as well Zog Nico is a reasonable man he gives great interviews He's great in three or four languages. Mercedes, the team, seem to love him. What's not to like? Yeah, he's not a bad driver. You know, he's, he's quite he's good at doing that. All right. Well, he's you've been a Nico fan for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, I mean, when he was at Williams, you were a big fan. Yeah, absolutely. And he's done the job that he should have done. He's done it flawlessly. And we're talking you know, about under, Rosberg, not the manager director of Parcel Force, right? We are, yeah, 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 <laughs> I always get those two confused. Just, just, 
Sorry. Yeah. Just to be clear. Just, and uh, he's done it under a lot of psychological pressure. That's the bit he's obviously fixed a bit, because I thought he was, in previous seasons, a choker. That When the pressure came yeah, calling, he got a bit flustered. Mm. And he yeah, seems oh, yeah, to have Hamilton got really got him last year. Yeah, and it's really actually did. Hamilton has got a bit flappy when things aren't going his way or when he feels that he's under pressure. So, yeah. yes, Rosberg has somehow psychologically improved. But it is true that I think you're talking about you know, wanting Hamilton to win more. I mean, you know, Hamilton's season has been more dramatic. There's been more drama and interest in his season than in Rosberg's, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I did find myself you know, something that looking you know, kind of further back down the grid for the excitement, really. I, mean, uh, I, I was about the, to say you know, exactly that. Alonso was driver of the race for me this week. Yeah, they were terrific job opportunistic that, um, lunges, uh, weren't they, the towards the end? Fifth. Yeah. Beautiful to see that. Yeah, Eric Boulier. Eric Boulbase, I think you call it. Boulbase, yes. Yeah. Lovely, tasty... Uh, <laughs> No, I am thinking I'm, of the food, though. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he said, yeah, you are seeing the old McLaren, the, the US Grand Prix, McLaren capable of fighting. But I'm not absolutely certain that that's what happened because there were a few retirements f- from the race. And I think the tyre strategy that McLaren used for that race made their car look a bit racier at the end because they had better tyres for the last few laps than the people they were racing against. So it made them look a bit more fiery than they actually were. But they're Japanese... Grand Prix was an utter, unmitigated, embarrassing disaster. I feel for McLaren. Mm, you know, yeah. You're right. We're looking down the grid for more entertainment. We're getting it from the battle between Force India and Williams as well. You yeah, know, that, yeah. that's proving to be a good one. And, of course, Max Verstappen. Now, where are we on Max's elbows out driving? Richard? Well, I don't mind it because it makes things more interesting. You can argue about whether he's overstepping the mark, but I quite like the fact, if they were all doing it and it turned into a bit crash and bash, BTCC, then you might have to say, look, come on, everyone, just wind your necks in. But, because it's sort of him and him alone, and he seems to be upsetting some of the old yeah, guard, yeah. and you've got Sebastian Vettel, who's sort of turning into a disgruntled neighbour, practically leaving notes under the wipers of Verstappen's <laughs> car. Please do not park here. Um, then uh, you sort of, you have to enjoy that, and I do enjoy that. I think it's fantastic, and I like his pluck and his spirit and his gung ho nature. And yeah, he's a hmm. kid, and he's obviously a terrific driver, but he's also just got a little bit more balls than some of the other ones out there who are busy managing parcel force. No, the um, car. Sorry, the car managing the car. He's some. Sometimes, you know, pushing his luck a little bit in terms of what he can get away with, but yeah. that's fine. Good. You know, that's what we want. Yeah, we do. It's absolutely. the mark of the great. Absolutely. Senna did yeah, that. Hamilton does that. You know, yeah, yeah, sure. Alonso in his day does that. That is what separates well, the true uh, greats from people who are likely to be the 2016 world champion. But the, the, <laughs> the, the, but the other thing is, you, you know, you can get away with it if you're a skilled driver who actually can make a move work rather than something that just barges in like an elephant just trying to shove somebody off the corner. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, you know, but, you know, then you're allowed to get a bit. He's you know, not dangerous. Out, you know. I don't think Max is dangerous. I think there are occasions when Schumacher was definitely dangerous when he tried to shove Barrichello in the wall, mm. and there were mm-hmm. occasions yeah. where he was genuinely dangerous. Yeah, sure. But I don't think Max is dangerous. I think Max is risky. And that's a good thing, you know, a bit of mm. risk, a bit of enterprise, a bit of entertainment, you Never know. predictability. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Spunky. Can't say that. <laughs> hey, Dad, he said spunky. Oh, Max, grow up. Hey, no pushing. <laughs> I'm guessing that you guys, as motorsport fans, have probably seen the latest edition of Tuned, a sort of special edition which McLaren made recently to celebrate the 40th anniversary of James Hunt's McLaren World Championship. Did you see that video, Zark? I seen didn't, it? actually. No, no, oh, I, I must you, catch up with it. I must catch up with have it. you seen it, Richard? No. Well, maybe I was wrong, because if you two haven't seen it, the chances are people listening to this program maybe haven't, haven't seen, it. seen it either. But it does hark back to the days when McLaren were genuinely fantastic. 
And it's been, what, three years now since McLaren were genuinely fantastic? I was going to say, you know, it's, it's not all that long since they were genuinely fantastic. Three years is a lifetime in Formula One, isn't it? It's Max Verstappen's coming of age, isn't it? Yeah, true. Um, well, hang on. I mean, just, so when was the last time that Ferrari was genuinely fantastic? When was the last time that Williams was genuinely uh, fantastic? Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Yeah, that is true. It's, Good point. Just, so McLaren's fantasticness is still a relatively recent memory. Hmm. And they should be getting it back, but... You know, well, hasn't they've ha- had plenty of opportunities yet. to get it right, and it hasn't been happening. And I'm wondering if that's why we've got to this, frankly, shocking situation where it's mooted Ron Dennis is no longer going to be in control of the team. I can't conceive of that universe. McLaren without Ron Dennis is like parcel force without that very good man who manages parcel force well yes and no you mentioned James Hunt Ron Dennis wasn't running the team when he won his world championship True. they were a terrific team back then yeah. so when did he take over 81 but yeah in the modern era you're right it's like Ron Dennis is McLaren and vice versa but then also let's not forget there was that period when he stepped back from the team and mm. Martin Whitmarsh was running things and Ron Dennis didn't go to the races or anything like that. He wasn't part of the F1 team because he was busy with, with the, the road, road car, car thing. thing. Yeah, other, other and then he sort of business. muscled his way back in again. So, yeah, but it is a bit weird. It depends. It's all a rumour at the moment, isn't it? But he'll mm-hmm. be sort of ushered out. I mean, but I it's not like he'd be completely booted out of the premises. Yeah, he I mean, could still I, be involved in the road car bit. Well, well, I thought the situation was that nothing is going to change in terms of his owning 25% of McLaren, I think mm. it is. But he will definitely not be in his position as CEO. Uh, CEO of the group when his contract runs out, which is, mm. what, next year? So, yes, I believe he's definitely out. It's weird all these people who you assume are sort of more powerful than God and they still have contracts and they mm. can still effectively be... Be kicked Shunted out if, they out. Don't, if yeah. politics. Yeah, well, you can't help thinking that maybe the team would have been doing a little bit better if there wasn't this kind of stuff going on in the background. So maybe it wouldn't make a difference, but being yeah. ousted from yeah. the board of a firm that you have put your heart and soul into that happened to a friend of mine and it killed him. It actually killed him. He fell into a spiral of depression as a result of that. And that sort of thing where you have your power base taken from you is the very thing that can destroy a person. And I'm genuinely concerned that Ron, without a race team, is no Ron at all. He will enjoy his fastidious work on making road cars. But it... Oh, that's the Ron Dennis alarm going off again. Um... Uh, hang on, I have to go and turn that off. Go hang on. Yeah. This is so optimal. <laughs> I'm concerned for his well being. I'm not being facetious here. I'm genuinely concerned because Ron eats, breathes, lives, smells, inhales, exhales McLaren. You stood next to him, I'm sure that's true, isn't it, Richard? He but, smells very nice. <laughs> yeah. I interviewed him once. I've met Ron Dennis a few times, I think I've mentioned it on the show, and mm. I've always found him to be much more charismatic in real life than perhaps he comes across as on TV. Yeah. And I interviewed him for Evo magazine a few years ago when they announced the 12C road car, and he was talking about stepping back from the F1 team then. Hmm. And for the first race of that season when he suddenly wasn't involved and wasn't going to the races, he told this story about how he decided to go and watch it at a local hotel. Hmm. And I can't remember why he even brought this up, but there was something quite sweet and also a little bit sad about the story, almost as if he couldn't bear to watch it on his own at home. He had mm. to go and... Aww. and he So he was watching it in this sort of TV lounge of this country hotel, having mm. a cup of tea, and then people were coming in and sitting down and, and watching it and not noticing that one of the former <laughs> linchpins of the should sport be on the pit wall yeah, was, uh... was sitting at the back of the room with a cup of tea and a slice of cake. But there was something that you felt a little bit sorry for him about. So you went, oh... Oh, he's, he, he's, he, I presume he's got a telly at home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, to, I mean, to me, you know, it would be a great shame to see him go. I like Ron Dennis. For all the people complaining about, about him being a bit grey or boring, he's just very focused on what he does, and what he does, he does incredibly well. Can I tell you a tremendous Ron Dennis story that Please he do. didn't tell me, but somebody else told go me on. recently? I can't remember who. Ron sometimes has parties at his house, which you think that's a bit, you know, because Ron, imagine Ron inviting people into his house and then the risk that they'll drop things and spoil his furniture oh, and things. Worse than drop things, they might just misalign a book exactly. on the bookshelf and then slightly. And have to have the whole house knocked down. Yeah. And so not that long ago, apparently, he had a party 
but he made it a sort of fancy dress party and you had to come, it was a pyjama party. And when you arrived, there were novelty slippers and everybody put on novelty slippers, took mm. the shoes off, put on novelty slippers and everyone went, this is really good fun and wow, Ron's gone to extra effort here. No, Ron's not stupid. Ron's going, if I lay on novelty slippers, I'll know they're clean and no one will mess up my car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, the man is an OCD genius. Other people who suffer from those sort of compulsions to make sure everything is in order could watch and learn from him. He's yeah, a clever man. I'm not surprised. Turn it into a positive thing. Also, talking about changing of regard, Bernie is still there, hanging on by his... Uh, I would imagine Bernie's got pretty sharp fingernails. You know, mm. He's got his claws in and he's hanging on. But F1, under new management, more significantly, under new American management. What's that going to do to the sport? More adverts? Let's wait and see, but I wouldn't assume that it's going to mean huge differences. You think it's like the Queen Mary, it takes a long time to turn it round? Yeah. Yeah, well, to some extent, yes, and I don't think they've bought it intending to make huge changes. No, but they have bought it intending to make huge profits, so they will do whatever that requires. There's been some sort of vague mention that they want to look more at expanding into other markets and making it more global, moving it away from a sort of European centre of gravity, which has kind of been happening for a while. I can say that's very much continuing the present plan. But can you imagine trying to sort out Formula 1, arriving as the new owner and going, right, you lot, here's what's going to happen. But it wouldn't, would it? Because of all Mm -hmm. those different agreements Mm. and contracts and things Mm -hmm. that are in place. And then the other thing, of course, you wouldn't do is bin off Bernie, because he's the only one who knows how it all works. Mm -hmm. And he's the only one who can whip them all into line. Imagine if you went, right, Bernie, bye, goodbye, sorry, surplus requirements. Now, sitting down in a room with all the team bosses... Well, yeah, listening he's, to them win John. He's bound to be involved in a bit of team wrangling, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, but then you realise that actually without him, probably F1 would be in total disarray, and we do moan about him, and rightly so, because he's a... That's, he's, he's a man. Um, a benign dictator. Yes, well, well, that's a lovely way of putting it. Dictators yes. do like, get um, stuff done. If you want to turn a country around, put a dictator in there. You know, If you want to turn an industry around, put a dictator in a single, not a board, but a no, no, I, don't, I completely agree with that. Autocrats, yeah. certainly autocrats get things done in the corporate world. You know, nobody thought that uh, right, Ferdinand Piek, for example, was not a pussycat. Yeah. And, uh, the things they do may not be things that you want done, but they will get things done. Did you mm-hmm. hear that? There was a Bob Lutz story about he was talking to Ferdinand Piet when the fourth generation golf was announced. You remember that was a real mm. kind of step up in perceived quality. This is Bob Lutz who was running Ford at the time? No, or, he no? was, he was uh, before he went back to GM. So anyway, he was talking to Piet at the motor show where that golf was announced and he went, wow, Ferdinand, how the hell did you get the shut lines that tight? It's just an incredible quality piece of work for a mainstream car. But how did you manage it? And Piet went... I told the people responsible for it that they had to do it, and if they didn't, they'd be fired. That's <laughs> how you get stuff done. And that's it. That's yeah. how we used to do it. It's the same yeah. with the Phaeton. You know, famously had these sort of ten demands of incredible engineering. That Did you just say Phaeton as opposed to Phaeton? Yes. Is it Phaeton? Yeah, I think so. I've always said Phaeton. Hmm? Phaeton, uh, Phaeton. You say banana, I say potato, tomato. potato. <laughs> Except nobody says potato, do they? That's, that no, song's yeah. always been wrong. Tomato, yep. tomato, yes. Anyway, no, the Phaeton, he, he did the same thing. He just went, I want this of this car, and if you don't achieve it, you're fired. It's a brutal and horrible way of running a company, but at the same time, it gets things done. And we go live now to David Mann at the McLaren Technology Centre in Surrey. That's right, Dave. I'm here in Woking where any moment now McLaren boss Ron Dennis will deliver a statement on his future within the company. And in fact, yes, he's coming on stage right now. Greetings, human units of male and female configurations. You may have recently consumed a quantity of media output of a minimal specificity regarding my occupational circumstantitude within the environments of this organisation, and I have requested your attention and awareness this pre-noon to provide an integer of information, or, to speak with more specificness, to provide a factor of conclusivity regarding the autonomy in executive province, which, in line with some estimated data sets, may be subject to preordained devaluation in magnitude over a foreseeable epoch. Message ends. So, David, um... Is Ron Dennis leaving McLaren? Uh, honestly, David, I've no idea. Gareth Jones on speed. 
I think we all agree that the front end of the F1 grid is where most of the focus is, but a lot of the entertainment in Formula One. It, it's the Ron Dennis alarm again. There we have Stand by. Reset. How did he get Reset. in again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fox. It always finds a way. going through your bins. Uh, right. I'm not going to edit that out. I'm just going to leave that in where okay. the hell not. Yeah. Well, as I say, down the grid, there's always more stuff going on, political intrigue and entertainment. So if the racing at the front end doesn't entertain you, the backstory will always entertain you. And the one which caught my attention this week is Nico Hulkenberg going to Renault. I'm not sure that's his best idea ever. What do you think, Zog? Well, I mean, he wants to go to a manufacturer. He wants mm-hmm. a works drive, and I, I can see the sense of that. But Renault? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Ren- well, how- Renault this year is the problem. Renault in about three years? Yeah, maybe. But if they're so far back, it's a hell of a journey. Maybe it's that part of their plan, though, is they need somebody dependable and experienced to really give them good feedback about that car. So what moment. you're saying is Renault needs Hulkenberg more than Hulkenberg needs Renault. Well, Maybe. who knows? It's, it's I that, don't know. That's not, I mean, cra- that's not a crazy idea. I mean, He's uh, got more F1 experience than the people have got in there at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. Although I wouldn't have thought that Renault's biggest problem was not having a good test driver. Or not Who's their a, test driver? I can't remember. Uh, it was Ocon, was but now oh, Ocon now has, car, has got so. a drive in Manet, yeah. Last year it was Carmen Jorda. Beautiful yes, yes. driver. What's to her? Oh. Well, with the genie move from Enstone, I think she slipped away with that. She should have driven for Jordan, shouldn't she? Hey, what about Jordan King had a drive? Upcoming British driver, had a bit of a go at the American Grand Prix, did quite well. Seems like a very nice boy. Have you seen the interviews with Jordan King? What a great name. That's my solicitor, I think. <laughs> Jordan <laughs> King. Slater, <laughs> Nazi and Jordan He's King. He's got a bit of a sideline, it turns out. My brother lives in Leamington and there's a big lawyer's office on the way into Leamington from the motorway called Wright Hassel. <laughs> oh, really? I always think, why did you yeah. not at least put the names the other way around? Because you go, how's your lawyer? Mm, right Hassel. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Hulk going to Renault, but at the point of recording, we don't know who the other driver would be. I want you both to volunteer the name, who you think it should be, if the choice is between Magnussen and Palmer. Say out loud which driver you would give it to now. Magnussen. Sog, you didn't speak. I didn't, no. I, I, <laughs> you I was, spoiled I it. was thinking about it. I'm sorry, because I, 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 a couple of weeks ago I would have said Magnuson, but actually, you know, Palmer has been impressed me a bit more recently. He seems he's had a bit more grit, determination, and he's been a bit more competent. I might give Palmer another year. I think if you've got Hulkenberg and Magnuson, you've got two sort of safe pairs of hands there, haven't you? Mm-hmm. They're both yeah, yeah, dependable. They're the kind of people that... You'd lend your lawnmower to and know that they'd return it in pristine condition. They're just they're just dependable, solid sort of blokes. So have Palmer in there as well, just to shake it up a bit. Well, yeah, but that's the thing, you know. I'm, that's a, why I'm sort of talking predictable. myself around there because it's maybe it's a bit boring. But then, yeah. you know, at the same time, Palmer, you'd lend him your lawnmower and then and hope to get it back. Yeah, you'd find that his dad had flogged it. <laughs> Or bought yeah, five no, no. identical lawnmowers. Maybe he'd have swapped it for a racing circuit, so you wouldn't do too badly out of the deal. I haven't got your lawnmower, but here's Brown's hat. Oh, that's not bad, yeah. I'll take your point, Richard. I think Magnuson has proved that he's good enough. Jolian, 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 Joey, Lee, 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 I'm never Joe, certain. Joe, 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 Joe Joy. Yeah, he's close. He's not that far behind Magnuson, but he is behind Magnuson, and therefore. The choice is automatic, unless, of course, Mr. Palmer comes with sponsorship that Mr. Magnuson doesn't, which yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't know what kind of money they might come no. with, do we? But, mm. um, it's been mooted that Jolyon could go to Force India. He's not a bad driver, he's just still on the learning curve. How long did Magnuson yeah, def- have def- with def- McLaren? There's definitely room to improve, but I think he's, you know, yeah. he's doing a good job. Whenever they play in the radio messages from him, he sounds really knocked at yeah, the moment, he always sounds it? like he's having a bit of a hissy yeah. or yes. a panic. He does. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if it's just because obviously they select the radio player, but he is notable amongst the drivers for always sounding like he's making a slightly testy phone call to British Gas or something. <laughs> but I waited it all afternoon. I don't understand yeah. what's going on. There's no way to run a business. <laughs> it's I'm just sorry a you feel that yeah, way, Mr. Right, Palmer. Right, we'll have someone to come and read your meeting next Thursday. five to man the f*** up. <laughs> <laughs> 
I cannot defend his radio manners. No, you're absolutely, absolutely right. Oh, oh dear, those poor people at Renault. And also, you've got to feel for Grosjean and Gutierrez as well, because whilst they had a flying start to the beginning of the season, it was okay, and it's ebbed off. They had a reasonable American race, which I'm very pleased for them. But Grosjean sounds a bit frustrated from time to time as well. I think they're talking about changing their brake disc supplier because the brakes... Well, they've had a couple of brake problems, and it must be frustrating for Grosjean having good result at the start of the year, and then the rest of the season having so many problems and just not getting anywhere near that kind of form. So, yeah. What's a Haas going to do? Take a guess, guys. What are Haas going to do? I say Haas, not Haas, because apparently it is Haas what are Haas going to do next year you know the difficult second album was <laughs> it beginner's luck for them are they going to do worse next year will they be behind manner is the question I don't know because it seems like they admitted that they should have done things differently from the start what if, like not bother turning well, <laughs> at all well, what's like, the point they should have spent more on their own development basically I think mm. it, was, it was basically their but would their that point. have and, been any better is the question. I doubt it. I think they'll be starting from well, so far behind, it would yeah. be impossible. At least Alara, you know, I've been teasing about Hamilton. Oh, America, it's his home race. Hass is home race. Where is it? Italy. Monza <laughs> it is it, it, Delara and Ferrari, you know, who are the big part of that Haas team. It's the Italian race. Well, is the yeah, home but race. also technically Silverstone, since their factory's in Banbury as yeah. well. I mean, yeah. their home race is many places that are not America. Home is where the house is, is that what they say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got manor. Does anyone care about manor? Do you care about manor at all? It's John? funny, I've got to admit, I like the fact that they've got golf colours. That's it. They've, you know, <laughs> they've, got, they, they, they've basically got the they've basically got golf orange and blue on the race suits and it's on the team livery of the cars. And that colour scheme just always does something for me. So yeah, I like that about manor. Richard, do you care about Manor? No, I, I think I used to. I don't know whether I do anymore. I was just thinking I'd probably rather that Haas slash Haas were ahead of Manor because I've sort of grown to quite like them. Mm. And, and I quite like Grosjean occasionally being in the top ten when you didn't expect him to clean the early bits of the season. You just went, hang on a minute. Mm. How did that happen? Yeah, oh, he's sort of surprise. matured as a driver and here's this team yep. that should really be absolutely bang last because they're new. But no... There they were, doing reasonably well on occasion. Yeah. And I quite liked that. And I like Gene Haas, 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 Haas. <laughs> because he reminds me sometimes when he speaks of Dr. Denzel Dexter, the character from The Fast Show. We yes. took four cardboard tubes. That, he's just got that sort of slightly Dave. space cadet there. Yeah. Dave! Yeah. Yeah. So, yes... What was the question? I can't remember myself no, there. Which is probably just as well, because it's time to finish the programme, boys Three. and girls. Three. That's all we've got time for this week, boys and girls. You know, when presenters say that, I always think, we should have started the programme bloody earlier then. That's all we've got time for. <laughs> but that is all we've got time for. He was Zog. Goodbye. He was Richard. Goodbye. I was Gareth, and this... Uh, what was this again? It was... Um... Oh, I forget. Yeah. To send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site, follow us on Twitter, or to find out about sponsorship opportunities, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Gareth Jones on Speed!